Hi and welcome to another video by me, Joe Onwin, also known as Flo Joe. Today we've got an exciting PowerFX video for you. It is the split function. So what is the split function? Well, the split function allows you to take a piece of text and split it based on a particular character. Now, let's say you have three names. You've got Flo Joe, you've got Jax, and you've got Meg. And they're separated by commas. You can target that comma to split them up and then what you'll have is you'll have Flo Joe, Jax, and Meg. But because they'll be split, they'll be in a table in rows. So you'll have Flo Joe as row one, Jax as row two, and Meg as row three. And then you've got a data table split based on whatever you've decided to split on. And you've broken apart that uh, string, that text, into a table so that then you can manipulate the data further, react on that data, or do whatever you want with it. So let's actually jump in and take a look. So let's look at the example that we were just discussing. We've got splits, we've got capital S, split, open the parentheses, uh, open the quotation marks, then I've got flow Joe, comma, Jax, comma, Meg, and then I'm closing the quotation marks. Now this section here, this first section before the comma between that, is where you're going to put your text. So if you're getting it from co, uh, if you're getting it from somewhere like I don't know, uh, DataVerse, you're getting it from SQL, you're getting it from SharePoint, anywhere you're pulling that text from, then simply you're going to be passing it into here, providing it is a text type. If it's a table type, this will not work. It has to be text, so a string essentially. So if you've got a text type come through, and you're wanting to split it up. Let's say you've got a list of names like this. Well, then what you can do is you pass that text in, you put comma, and then you open quotation marks and close quotation marks. And between those, you put your separator. Now your separator is essentially the character that is going to separate and be targeted to separate these individual items. Now in this instance, I've got Flojo, comma, Jax, comma, Meg. Now, I want to target the comma to split these three up so that I have three names individual in a table and then I can do whatever I need to do with them. So I put a comma here and it targets that. So I've got multiple examples here and I've got a table down here to actually show you the results. So let's actually take a look at it in action. So if I remove this comment here, it says split, flow Joe, Jax, Meg, all in commas, and this is where you're passing your text in. Now, I mentioned previously that if you're pulling any data from somewhere else, you'll pass the text into here. But if you're writing a list of items or something like that yourself manually, you have to put the quotation marks in here because you're hard coding that and you're passing it in and you need to signify that it is actually text. So you're going to do split. I've got flow Joe, and then I've got my comma here and then I've got my other quotation marks and I've got my separator. So you can see here it says text and separator. If I highlight the separator, it highlights where each item is going to get split. So this one here after Jax will get split and this one here after Flojo will get split. So I'll have Flojo, Jax and Meg. So if I click here, you can see it's a data type of table and I've got a value column and I've got Flojo, Jax and Meg. I've got individual names now, individual items that I can then cycle through and do whatever I need to do. And as you can see down here, it's also showing you this data table. Now, what happens then if I want to do something that's not a comma? Let's say I want to split on a character. Well, this one here, I've got an example with two names. I've got Flo Joe and Joe. Now there are three O's. There's O in Flo, O in Joe, and then O in Joe again. And I'm actually going to be separating on the O. So what actually happens? Well, as you can see here, I've got F, L, W, J, E, comma, space, J, and E. So what's actually happening? Well, if I highlight this, it's highlighting the O's that it's separating on. So after F, L, we've got a separation. And what you need to remember is when you separate on a character, that character gets removed. You're not going to see that character. So as it says here, it says FL, there's no O and it's got WJ. So we've lost that O because it's removed that because it's the separator. It's removing the separator when you're doing this split function. And then we've got 
wj splitting again e uh, comma space j so it's actually taken into consideration the space there as well it's it knows that there is a space and it's not a, tra a trailing or leading space so it's a part of the character it's a part of the string so it's completely capturing that so we've got e comma space j and then again we've just got e because there is one e after the last remaining o so that it doesn't mean you have to use a full stop it doesn't mean you have to use a comma you can use any character you want but remember that it removes those characters and then lastly let's look at a real world example then let's say you've got a text-based column and they are email addresses and you're wanting to pull apart that email address to get the user as well as the domain well you can use split to do this so what I've got here I've got split open the parentheses quotation marks Joe at flowjoe.io I'm then closing those quotation marks my comma and then I've got my separator so I've got the two quotation marks here I've got the at sign and you can see here that's where it's getting split so that will be removed and then I'll just end up with joe and flowjoe.io so I'll end up with the user and domain so if we go into this table here you've got joe and flowjoe.io and it's also represented down here on the data table and that is how easy it is to split up some text based on a particular separating character in PowerFX and you can do this on Power Apps or Copilot Studio. I'm using Power Apps as an example, but you can use it anywhere that PowerFX is used, providing that the function is actually implemented in that location. If you have any questions at all, leave a comment below, hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you on another video soon.